وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters hope and healing is achieved from fasting So this is something amazing because in the month of Ramadan, Allah Almighty has prescribed upon us the fast. And he says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. Now, taqwa is, like we've said before, the correct relationship with Allah to develop a barrier between you and the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah, the negatives, anything that goes wrong. So if we want to create that barrier, we need to fulfill the instruction of Allah, knowing that there will be peace in it, there will be tranquility in it. When the month of Ramadan enters, automatically we feel a sense of healing. We have a spiritual healing. We feel a sense of consciousness. Consciousness of our maker and then consciousness of those around us who are needy, who don't have as much as we have. This is something that is amazing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says that he has prescribed it upon us for this purpose. And if you look at the verses thereafter, Uh, That verse was 183 of Surah Al-Baqarah, but as we look at the verses thereafter, 185 and even further, Allah tells us how He gives us hope when we are unwell by making it easy for us, by telling us you don't have to fast. Subhanallah, you're unwell. Now, I have a problem because I need to fast, but I'm not feeling well. Allah says, no problem. We give you hope by telling you, It's okay. You don't need to fast right now because you're not well or you're unable, incapable. So Allah says, فَمَنْ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ As for the one who is unwell or who is on a journey, they can make it up on another day, some other time, subhanAllah, when it's a little bit easier, when you can, when you're able once again. So this is the blessing of Allah. The healing we're talking about in fasting, we're supposed to be praying during the fast and we're supposed to be increasing our remembrance of Allah primarily by increasing the recitation of the Qur'an. And this month is known as Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila feehi al-Qur'an. It is the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed. And that Qur'an is filled with healing. So definitely this month will be packed with that which remedies the heart, the soul, even physically. We achieve healing. If you were to research the healing through fasting, the intermittent fasting throughout the year and the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah, recently I went into the physical aspect of healing from fasting and it's just amazing. It's a topic on its own and subhanAllah, we get rid of the toxins, we get rid of so much of negativity from us and we feel much better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us healing through the fasting and may he give us hope through his mercy at all times. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after speaking about the one who is unwell, speaking about the one on a journey and saying that the person can fast at another time, Allah makes mention of the prayer at night and the supplication. In fact, he didn't specify the night, but you and I know that it's better to supplicate at night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ When my worshippers ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about me, let them know I am very near. Subhanallah. Look at the healing in that verse. Allah is telling you, you're asking about me. 
I'm very, very near. Ujibu da'wa da'an. I always respond to the call of the supplicator whenever he supplicates. You call out to Allah, you're asking Allah something. He says, I'm very near. I heard you and I have replied you. I've responded you. You may not know exactly how right now, but Allah hears you. There's never a time that he didn't hear you or that he is unaware. That itself is filled with so much of hope that Allah gives us through this beautiful Quran where he is telling us in verse number 186 that when my slaves ask you about me, tell them that I'm very near. I respond to the supplication of the one calling out to me whenever he or she calls out to me. So therefore, keep on asking me and believe in me so that you will be rightly guided. Subhanallah. Allah says, improve your faith in Allah. Improve your conviction in Allah. When you call out to Allah, He knows what you're asking Him. He knows whether it's better for you or not. Sometimes we desperately want something that's bad for us. And sometimes we don't know the right timing. So Allah says, we will give it to you at the right time. You don't worry. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us constantly you do the calling, you call out to Allah, you be convinced that He's heard you and He will give you and be satisfied with the response that is going to come. Whatever comes in your direction, just say Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I thank you. I'm alive, I'm surviving. It's okay. I might be going through struggles. These struggles are better for me in the long term, perhaps even in the short term. There must be some goodness because I've lost this and I've lost that in terms of worldly matters, but I haven't lost you, oh Allah. In fact, the loss in worldly matters heals our souls to the degree that spiritually we become closer to Allah than we ever were. So that itself has healing. We move on also to the verse of spending, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 195, two very interesting things. Spend in the cause of Allah. And the cause of Allah is broad, very, very broad. You spend on the poor, the needy, you spend on whatever there might be a need for. Allah creates a need and if he wanted, he didn't need to create that. But he made it to give us an opportunity to shine. So you rise and shine, mashallah, because you want to give and fulfill that which Allah has placed on your shoulders and fill the gap that Allah created intentionally to test whether you're going to actually fill it or not. So we fill it by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we give, it will protect our own selves. We will feel good. We feel appreciated by Allah. We, we feel thankful that Allah used us. So when I pledge to give somewhere, Allah will give me and I will give that place or that person. And if I continue to give, Allah will continue to give me. In that there is a lot of hope and there is healing. Because the best charity is the one you give when you're fearing poverty. That's what the Prophet ﷺ says. The best charity you could ever give is when you blindly believe. And when you know that Allah is going to give me, therefore I'm giving. You don't give everything you have and you don't not give, but you strike a balance. And when you give, like I said, your soul is strengthened, your spirit is strengthened, your belief is strengthened. Everything is empowered, you feel good, your mind is at ease. So Allah says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Immediately upon that Allah says, and do not throw yourselves into destruction with your own hands. Now there is a connection between the two parts of the verse. One is to spend and the other one is not to commit suicide or not to harm your own self. Number one is don't just give everything away. Number two is Allah will empower you so that you feel good and you won't want to take your own life because now there is a meaning to your life and you know that Allah wants me to worship Him alone and to reach out to the other creatures whom He has created. That is something amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us in terms of hope. And if it wasn't enough for us to have healed in the month of Ramadan and healed through giving others and reaching out to the poor, Allah says, you know what? In the pilgrimage, there is healing. Subhanallah. You want to heal yourselves. You want to remedy yourself of the sins that you've committed in the past. And you want to cleanse yourself because there was too much you must have done. And you have a lot of baggage, for example. 
one way out is to go for the pilgrimage. It will not only empower you, it will strengthen you and it will cleanse you. It gives you a lot of healing and a lot of hope. So inshallah, we want to go through a little bit of what the pilgrimage has for us in terms of healing. But for now, uh, I end off by saying, أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين.